discussion. I now give the floor to the Secretary General, His Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres. Madame la Présidente. Madam President, Excellencies, Russia's war on Ukraine shows no sign of letting up. The past seven months have seen unspeakable suffering and devastation. The latest developments are dangerous and disturbing. They are further steps away from any prospect of peace and towards an endless cycle of horror and bloodshed. As I have said from the start, this census war has unlimited potential to do terrible harm in Ukraine and around the world. The idea of nuclear conflict, once unthinkable, has become a subject of debate. This, in itself, is totally unacceptable. All nuclear armed states should recommit to the non-use and total elimination of nuclear weapons. I am also deeply concerned by reports of plans to organize so-called referenda in areas of Ukraine that are not currently under government control. Any annexation of a state's territory by another state resulting from a threat or use of force is a violation of the UN Charter and of international law. Madam President, thousands of Ukrainian civilians, including hundreds of children, have been killed or injured, mostly by Russian bombardment of urban areas. Every day, an average of five children are killed or injured. Almost every child in Ukraine has been scarred by the nightmare of war, from violence to family separation. Some 14 million people have been forced to flee, the majority of them women and children. The situation will only get worse with winter approaching and gas and electricity supplies dwindling. At the global level, the conflict has supercharged a triple crisis of food, energy and finance. This is driving millions more people into extreme poverty and hunger and reversing years of progress in development. And uh, it follows the COVID uh, crisis and the greater impact of the climate crisis. The most vulnerable are suffering most in developing countries, which are having Countries already grappling with recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and battered by the climate crisis, the most vulnerable are suffering the most. The United Nations is working to maximize every opportunity to alleviate suffering, including through my visits to Ukraine, the, the Russian Federation and the region, and my direct engagement with President Zelensky and President uh, Putin, together with our humanitarian Partners on the ground, we have provided aid to nearly 13 million people in need. It is essential that humanitarian workers have safe and unhindered access to all those requiring assistance, wherever they may be. Madam President, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights has been documenting the unacceptable impact of this war on human rights. The reports are a catalog of cruelty, summary execution, sexual violence, torture, and other inhumane and degrading treatment against civilians and prisoners of war. The latest accounts of burial sites in Izium are extremely disturbing. All these allegations must be thoroughly investigated to ensure accountability. Perpetrators must be held to account in fair and independent judicial proceedings, and victims and their families have a right to justice, remedy, and reparation. Ending impunity for international crimes is fundamental. In all this, the International Criminal Court plays an important role to ensure effective accountability. The prosecutor of the court has opened an investigation into the situation in Ukraine. Full cooperation with the court by all parties is essential. Madam President, 
the fact-finding fact mission I established following the tragic incident at the detention facility in Olenivka on 29 of July is ready to deploy as soon as all necessary assurances are received. The missions must have safe, secure, and unfettered access to all relevant places and people and to all relevant evidence without any limitation, impediment, or interference. Madam President, the situation at the site of Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, located in the middle of a war zone, remains a cause of grave concern. The International Atomic Energy Agency is consulting with all parties involved on measures to ensure the safety of the plant and surrounding areas. I thank IAEA for its work. Its continued presence at the plant is an important deterrent. All attacks on nuclear facilities must end and the purely civilian nature of such plants must be re-established. Any damage to nuclear infrastructure, whether deliberate or not, could have terrible consequences for people around the plant, about the plant and far beyond. The world cannot afford a nuclear catastrophe. Madam President, yesterday's news that more than 2050 250 prisoners of war were exchanged between Ukraine and the Russian Federation was a welcome development. I commend the efforts of both parties and hope that they will build on these with further exchanges aiming at an all-for-all -all formula. And I thank the governments of Turkey and Saudi Arabia for their role in securing this agreement. In July, also with the support of the government of Turkey, a landmark deal was reached, enabling the resumption of food and fertilizer exports from three of Ukraine's Black Sea ports. More than 4.3 million metric tons of food have since been moved, bound for 29 <laughs> countries across three continents. This includes three vessels chartered by the World Food Program to transport desperately needed food supplies for the people of Afghanistan, the Horn of Africa, and Yemen. A fourth left Istanbul today, and the fifth is on the way. Since the signing of the Black Sea Grain Initiative, global food prices have dropped sharply, although they are still almost 8% higher than a year ago. It is vital that these food shipments continue and increase so commodity markets further stabilize. The United Nations also signed a memorandum of understanding with the Russian Federation on the full access of Russian food and fertilizer products, including ammonia, to global markets. We are doing everything possible to facilitate this and to ease the serious fertilizer market crunch that is already affecting farming in West Africa and elsewhere. If the fertilizer market is not stabilized, next year could bring a food supply crisis. Simply put, the world may run out of food. It's essential that all states remove every remaining obstacle to the export of Russian fertilizers immediately. We need to get them to farmers at a reasonable cost and onto fields as soon as possible. Another major concern is the impact of high gas prices on the production of nitrogen fertilizers, and these must also be addressed without delay. Madame La Madam President, there is only one way to end the suffering in Ukraine, and that is by ending the war. I will continue to spare no effort for peace peace in line with international law and the Charter of the United Nations. Thank you, sir. And I appeal to all member states, especially those here today, to redouble all efforts to prevent further escalation and to do all they can to end the war and to ensure lasting peace. Thank you.